Hello, this is Mish, and welcome to another Westworld review. So this one is for Season 1, Episode 8. So before I get started, as usual, this is going to contain many spoilers. So if you've not watched the episode, go and watch it, then come back and have a listen. So let's start with the name of the episode. So the episode was called Trace Decay. Now that's a reference to memories and memory issues. So it's around short-term memory loss, or I guess automatic decaying or fading from memory, but the assumption that there's a trace of that memory still in the brain. Now for me, that, that is a reference to many characters within this episode. So this episode was absolutely jam-packed with stuff. Um, so this, whilst it's going to be a 20-minute review, it's going to be pretty brief on the actual content here because there's so much. I aim to do another another video with this within the week, and I'll dissect on the points I want to a lot more. But for now, I'll break this down into specific characters and their story arcs in this episode. So let us start with Bernard and Ford. So we see Bernard still pretty upset after killing Teresa. So his memory on that is still there. And we obviously see that, I guess, that double confirmation that he is a host. If you didn't pick up that up last episode, it was pretty obvious. So we see, um, you know, I guess the explanation that Ford gives to Bernard as to why he did it is because he was saying that Delos and Teresa were going to bring down the park. And all the work that he's put into it, all the beautiful things that they've made, would be destroyed. So that's kind of the logic that he gives to, to Bernard to maybe settle him down a bit. But he also says he'll wipe the memory for, of, of you killing her. But before he, before he does that, he wants Bernard to get rid of all the tracks. So he's a real lackey in this situation. He, he's probably quite a lackey, I guess, across the board. But you know, he says, clean up all the tracks. Make sure there's nothing that ties us to the death. And he does that. So we see him you know, deleting his image from videos, which is pretty impressive technology. We see him uh, removing his GPS coordinates off the map. And we see them, I guess, set up the scenario where they're saying that Teresa went to deliver the uh, information from the send her to the satellite and she falls down a ravine and that explains the physical trauma that she has obviously endured and it kind of makes sense because that would um, make sense to the board because the board are aware of what she was doing we've also been we've also learned that fact so you know it kind of makes sense as to what she's doing up there why she you know um, why she's up there at night in secret because they're extracting data from the park so they say she slipped and fell and that is what has happened now in the morgue where we see ford and Stubbs and hale kind of talking um in investigating obviously Teresa's uh, body there we see um hale pushing back on on ford saying you know it seems a bit coincidental that was the kind of just that she seemed to be implying to him and he immediately pushed back saying you know this has all been it's it's not that it's a good thing that happened, but that it gets rid of the cancer from the park. Because he also references the um, setup that Teresa and Hale did around Clem and how they got her wiped, saying that she's dangerous. And he was, you know, uh, Ford was just saying it was clumsy because we could see that it was it was manipulated by QA. So as a result of that, uh, Ford now is saying QA needs their access lowered. So that's Teresa's team. Um, so that would be Stubbs and all his uh, employees underneath him. So lowering their access to the park and, he, and Ford is going to set up more automated security. So we see the kind of pushback there, which is, for me, the suggestion that um, Hale knows that the, something has happened, happened here, but she doesn't really have a leg to stand on. But we'll see. Maybe she's going to investigate more. But at the moment, she kind of moves on to uh, getting Lee involved and getting the data out of the park. I'll talk about that more a bit later. So there was a fantastic conversation that happened around Bernard and Ford. And it was kind of that Ford was about to wipe Bernard because Bernard has done a job. He's cleaned up after killing Teresa. And now he he's going to, I guess, take pity on Bernard and, and wipe his memory. But before he did that, Bernard picks up that there was something that uh, Ford wanted to say, which was also pretty cool. Um, so he's kind of saying, you know, what do you feel? This is a fantastic situation because he's right. A programmer who knows how the world that they're in was working. So he knows how the machines are designed. He knows every intricacy about it. Maybe not Arnold stuff, but, you know, a lot of it. 
And then he's also saying, and you know that you are a machine. So you know exactly how your true nature is. And it was just, it was a fantastic point because that's still a question that I guess humans have all the time as well. You know, we're figuring out stuff, but we're still trying to figure out ourselves as well. So I thought it was a fantastic uh, parallel to, I guess, us in the, in the modern world. And it was just interesting about how he kind of was saying, you know, why, what is the difference between us? You know, are my feelings real? And once again, it kind of goes to the consciousness and the story and, and Arnold went crazy with these questions. Um, are, the, are the feelings real that the host are feeling? And he was saying, and Ford in the end kind of turned around and said, yes, there's nothing, there's no difference between us. So that, that whole topic is massive. And I could do a video just based on that one. So before I go down the rabbit's hole here, I'm going to kind of stop myself because I want this video to remain under the 20 minute mark. So once again, I'll aim to do a video on more specific detail and more in depth about certain things like this in a later point. Okay, so what else do we see with Bernard and Ford? So yeah, we see, you know, he then wipes Bernard. But we see Stubbs talk to Bernard at a later point. And he says, you know, I'm sorry about Teresa. Because he is being at the position he is, he knows everything going on. Well, clearly not. But he knew about her, their relationship. And um, it was funny because no one, I don't think Ford realized that Stubbs knew. And I guess it's quite common knowledge within their team by the sound of it. So he was quite taken back, the fact that Bernard never accepted the response because obviously Bernard's been wiped. So his memory of Teresa, I guess, and their relationship is gone. So Stubbs is, did he pick that up? He definitely knew that something was wrong, but maybe, I guess, you've got a couple options. One of them would be he knows something is up. Maybe this person is a host. On the other side, he could be saying, well, maybe this person is covering up for something. Or on the other side, maybe it's this person is so traumatized, they're keeping it all inside and they're not showing their true feelings. So we've got a couple options there, but, but I wouldn't be surprised if Stubbs investigates more. And the final thing with Bernard and Ford. We see Bernard ask Ford, have you ever got me to hurt anyone else? He does hesitate slightly, but he says no. Now, once again, do we believe what, Bernard, uh, what Ford is saying? Because... We see Bernard has a flashback, and it looks to me like that's Elsie, that he has taken her out. And it looks like he was choking her, so she's probably dead. Now, we've got two options. Either, obviously, Ford is lying, or number two, that Bernard is being c controlled by other people. It doesn't make sense for Teresa and G uh, Hale to, to have got Bernard, because they didn't know he was a host. So the only other person, I guess, would be whoever's whoever's programming as Arnold or if Arnold's still alive. Maybe, but it still doesn't really make sense to, to kill him. And the whole Occam's razor, it kind of makes more sense that it would have been Ford and he's just lying. Okay, and then moving on to Maeve. So we see Maeve back in her loop. And there's a new Clem. And Maeve is clearly unimpressed by the situation, which was great acting by her. It was really good. Um, so we see Maeve continue to have her flashbacks around her daughter. And working with Felix and Sylvester trying to escape. So we heard, got some new information about, I guess, how hosts are controlled within the park. So C6 is a vertebrae in the spine. And the hosts supposedly have that um, somehow laced with explosives. So if a host leaves the park, that will explode. That's clearly a failsafe so that um, hosts don't go outside the park and also that no one can steal the hosts or a, or a corpse of a host. Once again, could do a whole other video just talking about the technology around this and my assumptions on the technology. But once again, kind of keeping it brief here, trying to fit this all in the 20 minutes. So we see that Maeve is also kind of planning to, to get that uh, vertebrae disabled or possibly removed and then uh, get out of the park. But, you know, uh, Sylvester mentions kind of as a joke, you need an army to get out. So then that becomes Maeve's plan, getting an army and getting people involved to help her get out. So we see that Maeve has been, 
has become an admin. She figures out how to do it herself. So she sets herself up as an admin so she can control other hosts. You get to see that as time goes on. She, you know, whispers in their ear. She just tells them and stuff and they do it. So she's pretty powerful now. She's very, you know, as smart as you could possibly be as a host, which is far greater than the human. <laughs> and um, we see her controlling. So she's, yeah, she's pretty dangerous at this point. So we see that, I guess the idea here is that Maeve is, they want to take out that C6 vertebrae and a few other tweaks as well. So they're going to take her up to development and work on her there. So that was what we were led to believe. But what happened there is clearly Maeve is much smarter than Sylvester and knows that she he is going to betray her. So they kind of set up a double cross here. So we see that um, Sylvester, they take her up to development and they you know um felix pretends to wipe her and disable her and all the time while sylvester's kind of spilling his gut saying let's let's kill her let's let's wipe her let's get her out of here i mean it's fair enough he's pretty freaked out but it, it's pretty dirt what he's trying to do but we see you know um mave wake up and she attacks him she slices his neck and so that's a big step that's what um, Felix did. He took out the code that stops her as, uh, attacking and killing um, guests. So now she's even more dangerous. She's not locked down by code. She's incredibly smart and she's in control of other hosts. So she's something to watch out for. So she's now a host that is incredibly smart, who can control other hosts, who can attack guests and humans and staff. And she is trying to build an army. So yeah, watch out for her. <laughs> things to come on that. And once again, I'll go more into in depth into that in the future. But this one, we're already halfway. Okay, so let's move on to Dolores and William. Now we see them, I guess, progressing, trying to find uh, this location that Dolores keeps talking about. So we see them go to a beach, and we have uh, we see a whole bunch of bodies, and it's the um, Confederales again, and they've been attacked by the the ghosts. Once again, so they've been taken out. But we learn, though, uh, from that, that it was a setup, dumb, you know, advised by a recruit, hunting down three outlaws. And immediately, William uh, jumps to the conclusion that it's Logan, which sounds correct. So we're now we learn that Logan is working with the Confederales again, so he must have bribed his way out. Now he's in with them. So with that scene, what is another point here is around the timeline. So if you're not familiar with my timeline theory and many other people's theory is that we've got multiple timelines around Dolores and we see that again here. So we see her walk towards um, the water to get some water for the, the only person left alive. And she has, you know, multiple things going on where she sees her own body. Then she turns around and everybody's gone and she turns around her body's the body and the water's gone again. And then she turns around and everybody's back again. So once again, we've got that kind of flashback of her there with William and another timeline of her doing this stuff by herself. So, and then a voice comes across as well in her mind saying, come find him. I think that's what it said, come find him. That's how I interpret it. But an interesting point around that, I heard a female voice mixed in there. Before I've always interpreted it and thought it sounded like a male voice, but that time it sounded like a male and female voice. So then we see... Um, that they find the village. And once again, we get another flashback, but this one's a lot more in depth. So, but we see Dolores kind of walk towards the village and we see a flashback of her, it's actually three flashbacks. And <laughs> this is getting quite confusing, but so three flashbacks. So we see her see the village with William and it looks empty. So that's one flashback. Then we see it flashback again and it's full. Then we see it go back again, and there's no village. It's just the spire of the church. Okay, so I'm trying to explain. Does done? I've done this multiple times, trying to explain it the easiest way I can. I'm even confusing myself. So we've got the three timelines around Dolores in this scene. So one of them is the first time, this is at the very start of the park. She's there by herself in a full dress, and the, the village is populated. She goes there. A second time with William. That is when the park has been bulldozed and all we see is the spire of the church. A third time, she's back again by herself 
and the park has been dug out and but there's no one in it because that is the um the type the story that ford is currently working on which isn't finished the narrative that they're working on now i'll quickly go into what i found with this scene so it's many interesting parts many things make me really question many things i've said before as well so the flashback the flashback to her old self so when she's in a long dress she's walking through people are talking to her that same scene was done in a previous episode when ford was talking to bernard and he was explaining about arnold now we're seeing a scene looking from the same person's eyes so she's walking through the you know there's there's a i guess a, a dance practice you could say the training the host to dance she's walking through now that same scene has been done when ford was talking about arnold for me i guess disregard other things going on but for me that's a direct link for them saying um that that dolores is arnold because if you're doing a scene looking through the same people's eyes that's the same person unless it's a misdirection or you know a sleight of hand which these guys have done a lot but that situation there for me is suggesting that dolores is arnold now there's a lot more to it than that but that's just something that i found or a direct link there and another interesting point about the scene the flashbacks if you look here there's a flashback to that scene when everyone's getting wiped out she has another flashback when she's talking to william she flashbacks again and we see that wyatt is in her flashback so that's a reference to when she's with william so five years later after the park was opened so the second timeline she has a flashback to wyatt which suggests that wyatt was around at the very start so for me just from that one episode the suggestion here is that dolores was in the village at the start is she arnold that's what that one scene says i'm not saying it's confirmed but there's definitely a suggestion there that um that she was around at the start and there was as i said with that one scene there where it's out of her eyes but anyway i'll talk about that later but the people that get killed that when that village gets wiped out that seems to be done by wyatt as that photo there is, is from her flashback so that adds you know the story that ford is making is a historic reference to wyatt and Ted, it seems to be that teddy's probably involved but anyway i'll gonna stop because i'm gonna go over my timeline okay so we also see after we go, kind of go back to william and dolores that they run into logan so he's a rec- he is the recruit so things aren't looking good one other thing i want to mention around william around these scenes with dolores i know people have mentioned that william is the man in black and i've always kind of been on the fence with that one but this episode i kind of got a lot more hinting towards that i'll talk about what the man in black said soon but william seemed to be really hesitant about being good in this episode i still think it's a big stretch for him to turn how evil he is but it really seemed that he at some points he was really hesitant to assist and it just didn't seem like him didn't didn't seem like him okay so now let's move on to the man in black and teddy so this is the final ones we're going to talk about so we see teddy having flashbacks so he is also you know having that issue where he's flashing having flashbacks and they're affecting him so we see him take out the man in black and tie him up but before that happened they ran into i guess you know more devastation than why it is caused so remember these guys they're in the modern timeline and there's we find a character there that has been in it before and another interesting point about william being the man in black is that he re- recognizes her and she is the character that helped him very the very first time he entered the park she dressed him and got him all his gear and showed him around i don't know if you noticed but she's also the same character that walks um through a scene multiple times with that umbrella so just thought i'd add that in there okay so we see yeah yeah we have teddy flashbacks and then he assaults the man in black knocks him out because he's seen her him drag off dolores so then we get this massive spiel from the man in black so these are the points i need to talk about more um so what we we learned we learned the men in black's motives 
and many things about him with this spiel. One of them is that he's saying he owns the pack, which is once again a reference to Logan and William, because they seem to want to buy the pack initially. He also says that he owns the world. Now, I don't think we're going to take that literally. I think it was more suggestion of he's incredibly wealthy and powerful external to the pack. You know, a titan of industry, a god. So the you know the suggestion of very influ- influential man. So we also see that he's a family man. So he's married, and he has a daughter. But he's saying he's a good guy. That he doesn't do any of these acts outside the pack, but yet his wife really seems affected by his actions in the pack. She's aware of his his actions, his evilness within the pack. And says that he surrounds himself with good deeds to hide his evilness. And she ends up killing herself, uh, we're led to believe. And the kind of phrase that he's a dark star. So he was he's scary and you don't know if he's going to blow up or collapse around you. So really interesting information and fascinating stuff about the Man of Black there. And both these, all this could really lead to William again and Logan. It's a really hard call. But I wouldn't see that Logan would be a good person outside the pack. I could see he would be very, very um, clever businessman, a very um, successful businessman, but not a family man. But then we don't know these characters outside the pack. If we if we're suggesting that William can go from this good, honest character to the man in black, um, but outside the pack he's still a good person like he is at the start, can we not suggest that Logan? is a good person outside the pack as well and inside he's evil all things to think about and we but i guess we learn a bit more about one scene which i think there's more to it but he can he gave a really um basic overview about the times we've seen we see him killing uh, Maeve and her her daughter he was saying he was trying to test himself to see if he really is I guess evil and he proved that he was and that was how he saw the maze so we see the Maeve and her daughter you know she drags her out and falls into the soil and in the soil is a scratching of the maze it seems a bit weird I don't know if that's all that, that scene is about because he's saying it's simple that's all it is it was him testing himself which makes sense but I think there's just more to it than we're let on at the moment the only other thing that really happened I guess the only other thing that really happened. Heaps, so much happened, but the only other main, I guess, story change was around Hale and her new lackey. So note that with Teresa gone, Hale has found a new lackey and it's Lee. So she's getting him to put all this data inside a host, which is actually Abernathy, which is not a good idea of re-enabling him, and smuggle him outside the park. So how is he going to do that? Because we know that he'll have the explosives in C6 vertebrae. So that'll be interesting to see how he gets around that one. Maybe they won't, maybe he doesn't know about that and he'll try to get him out and he'll explode. That'll be interesting to see how that works out. But yeah, get him on the train and get him out was the was the word from Hale. So let's see how Lee goes with that. So all in all, fantastic episode. A lot to talk about. And again, this is a real brief overview. I'm trying to keep it concise as I've gone over the 20 minutes, but not by much. So I'll wrap it up here. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope I've given you a bit more information around stuff that if you missed out, um, didn't pick it up, that I've kind of covered it off a bit. There's a lot to talk about. I'm going to go into more about um, Bernard's thoughts and his conversations with Ford about um, Dolores and William and the suggestion that she's Arnold, even though I think that's pretty strange, but I definitely got that vibe from this one. And also around the Man in Black and Teddy. So stay tuned for that. Thumbs up if you liked this video, thumbs down if you didn't obviously, and subscribe for future content from myself around Westworld and other things coming out in the future. And until next time, this is Mesh, and I'll see you later.